everyone, look at me vlogging in public. I'm just on my way to um, a vlogger's event um, in Embankment in London and I thought I would vlog the experience. I probably won't do much talking during this vlog. I'm more likely to just take clips and insert them. But I'm going to the Orion event um, for Galanx and which is Orion slash Galang, so it's fantasy and sci-fi, so I'm hoping to see a bunch of people there. I know that Justine from I Should Read That is going, and I'm really excited to meet her. She was at an event that I went to earlier this year, but we didn't have a chance to meet. So I'm looking forward to that, and I know some other people from Twitter are going as well. I'm pretty sure the plan is to showcase the books that are coming out later this year and in early 2019, so it should be good to see some of the things that the publisher has planned. As for what I'm currently reading, that is Crony Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I'm buddy reading it with Lacey. I'm a bit behind her, I'm only 60 or 70 pages in, I think. Oh, 80 pages, better than I thought. I'm just reading before I go into the publishing house. And I think she's probably a few chapters ahead of me because she's had more time this week than I have. But today, I'm not really sure how much reading I'm going to get done. I'm planning on reading in my, any spare minute that I have, but I've got the event and then a friend's birthday party. I am expecting to have a really busy day and not much time for reading, but tomorrow I'm hoping to change that and I'm hopefully going to put some vlogging in as well because I haven't done any vlogging in ages. That's all I've really got to say right now, but I'll catch up with you later. Hey everyone, so I didn't actually record any of the events and I then didn't record anything for like a week and a half because life has just been crazy. Um, so I went to my friend's my boyfriend's friend's birthday party. The party was okay. Um, England won the quarterfinal, I think it was at the time, and my boyfriend got really drunk. So we left early and yeah, so that put a stop on that weekend. Not that I'm too bothered because I did want to come home really early anyway, so it worked in my favour as well. And for the past week I've just been working and it's been stressful and nothing much has really happened. I did finish the book that I was reading, that is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I took forever to read this, it took me over a week. Lacey finished it just after I did, so I didn't feel too bad about, you know, um, her leaving me behind. I did enjoy this book, but I didn't think it was amazing, and to be honest, I didn't think Six of Crows was amazing either, so I would say this is on par with Six of Crows. I felt like there wasn't enough at stake, like in theory there should have been, but I didn't really feel like any of the characters were actually threatened because it always felt like Kaz was going to fix everything and know he would know what to do or he'd have some sort of plan to get them out of stuff. So it didn't really feel great and there are a couple of things that I've been discussing with Lacey that felt out of place. There was one character that showed up that I, like, I, I screamed. <laughs> um, there was actual squealing going on because I wasn't expecting it. Lacey said something happened in a certain chapter. And I was like, oh well, I guess maybe like the action's gonna finally start happening. But no, someone showed up and I died a little bit. So that happened and that was probably the highlight of the book for me. I'm glad I completed this series, but it's not my favourite. And I will be reading King of Scars when it comes out in January because I'm super excited for that book and Nikolai is one of my favourite characters. So it'll be really good to see him again. Right now it is... Monday? Monday. It's Monday evening and I'm just about to sit down and record some videos because I haven't recorded anything in forever so I thought I'd do some sit down videos and including my tune wrap up which I still have, haven't done because I've been busy. So it's still Monday night which is why I look at state because screw Mondays but I just finished recording some videos and I think I've recorded four or five in one go which is crazy because I don't usually do that and I haven't done it in years. So I'm a bit tired, um, my voice has gone a bit crackly. So now I just want to kind of chill out and relax because it's gone nine o'clock and I'm really tired. But I haven't done any reading um, today really. I've read like two chapters of a book that I haven't actually told you about. I haven't told you about my book, one second. I'm currently eating Cocoa Pops because I'm an adult and I can make adult decisions about late night snacks. Oh, I'm on chapter six of this book, which again, I still haven't told you about. Hold on one second. So I'm currently reading Barbed Wire Heart by Tess Sharp and apparently getting the cover up was pointless because you can't actually see the cover. This is a thriller, Tess Sharp actually debuted as a YA author but from what I can tell 
her YA debut didn't go so well, but I loved it and I can't remember the name of it right now because I'm hopeless, but it is honestly one of my favourite YA thrillers. It's got a bisexual main character and she's grieving the loss of her best friend slash crush slash girlfriend and she's struggling with a disability as well. So there's a lot going on and it's a really, really good book and I'm going to put the cover here, hopefully I already have. And you should go and read it. It came out a few years ago, probably like 2014, maybe. And I've been waiting for Tess Sharp to bring out another book ever since. And she finally has this year. It's an adult thriller. And the book opened up with the main character as a little girl. And she saw her father kill someone. And it seems as though he's seeking revenge for the death of his wife. Because his wife and the girl's mother died and he seems to be going after the people who did it. I will keep you updated, I haven't read very much of it, I'm only on chapter six, but I'm intrigued by some of the ideas in it so far, and I'm hoping that I still love Tess Sharp's writing because I really did love her previous book. I'll keep you updated, but right now I want to eat my Cocoa Pops because I need sugar, lots and lots of sugar. Hey everyone, it's Tuesday evening, and I'm just chilling out at home. I was going to go for a run today, but to be honest, work kind of annoyed me and then I decided to just come home and chill out. Tomorrow I will be doing a run and my kettlebell workout, so all is not lost. Um, but I felt like I wanted a break in between. I haven't really done much reading. I did a little bit at lunchtime today and I read more of Barbed Wire Heart by Tess Sharp. And to be honest, I wouldn't really describe this as a thriller. Now that I've gone a little bit further into it, I can give you a better idea of what it's about. So there's this girl who lives in the South. She was raised by parents who were very aggressive and her dad is kind of like the alpha male guy who everyone's scared of and this girl has now grown up and she runs her mother's motel business she takes in women who have been abused and who are struggling with various difficulties like drugs um, abusive relationships being single mothers and she gives them a place to stay and helps them sort their lives out which is really really nice and then towards the start of the book one of the girls is beaten up by uh, her family's kind of rival the guy who killed her mother so she wants to get revenge and I wouldn't really say it's a thriller because there's nothing it's definitely not a psychological thriller and I wouldn't say there's anything mysterious or kind of dark about it other than the violence there's a lot of violence and it's very, very graphic, so I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. And to be honest, it's quite difficult for me to read because um, I can relate to a lot of it in various ways. I don't really want to go into detail in this reading vlog, but anyway. Um, so yeah, it's a quite a difficult read and it's more emotional than I would expect a thriller to be. But I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying reading it. It's just not at all what I was expecting. Maybe something else will happen later on in the book, but I'm 25% of the way through, I think, and it's still not got that thriller vibe. So I'm going to carry on reading it. Hopefully I'll finish it tomorrow and then I'll be able to start something else because I'm trying to keep in this reading mood so I don't get into another slump. Also, I've been rec also, I've been requesting lots of review copies lately, so I need to stay out of a slump, otherwise I'm going to get behind again. Speaking of, please let me know in the comments below if you'd like a video on all of the advanced readers copies that I've received um, that I still have to read and review. I was thinking about this earlier today, and I think it might actually motivate me to read them and get them through faster if you guys wanted to hear my opinions on them, or if you guys were excited about a particular one, you could tell me and then I could read it during a reading vlog or review it maybe in a separate review video because I want to start doing those again and then yeah I think that would probably be more motivating than me just blogging about them <clears throat> so please let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in that hey everyone happy Sunday I haven't really been vlogging as much this week so this week is probably going to turn into like a two-week reading vlog but it's okay because I've pre-recorded some videos and I'm gonna try to be at least a little bit consistent going forward. Um, I just wanted to update you on what I've been reading since there's been a bit. First of all, I finished Barbed Wire Heart by Tess Sharp and I quite enjoyed it. I wouldn't call it a thriller. 
I don't know why they're marketing it as a thriller, if they're marketing it at all, because I haven't actually seen it anywhere. I only knew it was coming out because I checked the author's Goodreads page and I just stumbled across the book. So yeah, that's not great, but um, it was quite a good book. It was enjoyable. It was very, very violent. And Tess Sharp has written a ton of a post for all the tr trigger warnings that are in this book, because there are a lot. After that, I wanted to pick up another thriller because I found it for one pound in the charity shop and I don't know I just thought I would pick it up because I'd heard so many good things about it and that was The Widow by Fiona Barton and this book has been getting so much hype and she's recently released another book in the same series that follow because the series follows the same journalist ow um <laughs> I think and so this is about a woman whose husband has died and prior to his death he was accused of abducting a toddler, a young girl. And it's a very, very dark book. So I would go into this knowing that there's a lot about child abuse, sexual abuse and paedophilia, child pornography. So it's not an easy thriller to read. Um, but at the same time it's not the best and I think I'm going to do a critical review of this one because I'm actually in the mood to review something and I think I've got a lot to say about this one. So this was good, I read it in one sitting, um, well I read it in one day over the course of like maybe six hours, um, which I'm quite impressed by um, because I haven't done that in a while. So yeah, I read and finished this yesterday and now I have no idea what to pick up. So I think I'm in the mood for a contemporary book. So my pick is, hold on. Potentially The Astonishing Colour of After, which is a debut for this year, and it's a YA contemporary. I think you probably all know what it's about. The main character's mother commits suicide and the main character believes that she's come back as a bird. And the main character goes to Taiwan and meets or visits her one side of her family and discovers stuff. Um, the only thing that's putting me off this book is that it's really long. However, the writing is like you know, quite sizable, so it's not going to take forever to read, it's just, it's quite a big book, and I would quite like to read something shorter, maybe. My other option is Every Heart a Doorway, which is a very short story written by Shannon Maguire. It feels like everyone but me has read this series, so I kind of want to get in on the hype before the fourth book comes out. And also it's short, I'm not really in the mood to read a big fantasy or paranormal book, but I feel like a shorter one would be okay. So maybe that, I think I'm going to do a Twitter poll, um, and then we'll see, and then someone else can pick my read for me, because I'm really struggling. Hey everyone, it is Monday morning, Quill is at the gym, and I skipped today because my back um, started hurting at the weekend. I don't know if I like jarred it or something, or if it was my slip disc that I had when I was younger acting up again. But... Yeah, my lower back was just in so much pain and I could barely like bend down or kneel down. So that was really annoying and it put me in a really bad mood over the weekend. But it feels a lot better today. I just didn't want to go to the gym in case it triggered anything else. So tomorrow I'll be back at the gym and I will hopefully be feeling a bit better about myself because right now I feel a bit crappy. But you're not here for that. I'm going to actually tell you what I've been reading. Um, yesterday I asked Twitter to vote on what I should read next and the choices were The Astonishing Colour of After, The Cabin at the End of the World, The Child by Fiona Barton which is the sequel to The Widow and what was the other one? Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon Maguire and Every Heart a Doorway and The Cabin at the End of the World came close. The Child didn't get any votes but The Astonishing Colour of After won and I'm now 110 pages into it. I've still got 400 or so pages to go. Um, it's a very fast read actually, I'm getting through it really quickly. I think I was only reading for about 45 minutes um, and that's when I read those 100 pages. At the moment I'm not loving it, I think I'm not a fan of the writing style and the main character keeps going on about colours because she's like an artist and her feelings are associated with different colours and her and her best friend talk about that all the time and that's just, it's not really for me. Um, I'm the least artistic person ever, as you can probably tell by my thumbnails, and I've just, yeah, I just, I don't really connect with the whole, like, colours and visual thing, so that's a bit disappointing, and I haven't seen much of Taiwan yet, um, 
but I will carry on reading it because I am expecting it to get a bit better at least. If not then I'll be very disappointed because this is one of the most anticipated books of the year for me. So yeah. Hey, so it is Wednesday morning and I've just been to the gym which is why I'm a bit of a slate but I just wanted to give you a quick reading update before I wrap up this vlog because I feel like this is a good place to end it. Um, I finished The Astonishing Colour of After and I didn't really like it. Uh, the writing was just, I'm still a bit out of breath from the gym, in case you're wondering. Um, the writing was just not for me and I didn't really like the story and I feel like the love story romance was out of place. So yeah, overall, not a very strong debut and not the best book of this year. Unfortunately, which it, this is a bit of a shame because I was really looking forward to this one, but then I also noticed that Gail Foreman blurbed it on the back and she's also an author that I don't really enjoy, so it makes a ton of sense. I have started another couple of books, but I will save that for my next reading vlog. Um, this week has been a pretty good week, I have to say. Um, work hasn't been too busy, I've got quite a bit of reading done, and I went to Odds Farm uh, last Friday and I don't think I took any videos there. Um, Quill and I took my younger sister who's 10 and it's basically like a petting zoo, a local pe petting zoo and I love it there. I thought it was really great and there was this adorable baby Shetland pony and I might have squealed a bit. And on Thursday night I went to see School of Rock, oh god, um, at the theatre and that was fantastic. I really really enjoyed that. I wasn't expecting to like it so much but it was very very good. Other than that, I haven't really done much, I've just been working. Um, there's not really been anything I could vlog. So hopefully next week's vlog will be a bit more interesting. I will be going to Yalk and going into London for dinner. Thanks for watching this reading vlog guys and I will speak to you all in my next video. Bye.